Hello, Dr. Lightman. Today we'd like to talk about something that truly intrigues me and I think everyone that tends to it. We'd like to know what are they and how we have many questions. A short story. When I was searching and reading and going through different books and someone told me suddenly, maybe you should check out Kabbalah. And then I got this book and someone started writing about the Tenth Sefirot and I didn't understand anything. And I think that the writer too didn't exactly understand what was he writing about, but I felt that there was something tremendous here. I was truly attracted to it and I became obsessed with it. I need to understand what is this thing, the Tenth Sefirot? I felt like it's a part of me and I, I really need that as if my life depends on it. So I wanted to ask, do you remember the first time that you stumbled upon the concept of the Ten Sefirot, the first time you met it? Dr. Lightman, well, I can't exactly remember when did I meet it, because I was really interested, I was really into science, physics, astronomy, perception of reality. Not Kabbalah. Uh, There were no Kabbalah books around me. I'm talking about the 60s. And therefore, I don't know. But when I came to the wisdom of Kabbalah, then I start understanding that, you know, probably here is that place, that the, here's probably that source that I'm looking for, and there was a real feeling. There was really this feeling like I'm in a forest, and I found a source of water. This was the feeling, that probably... It includes everything. Host, what exactly do you remember a specific moment where you understood that what I hear now, that this is what I'm looking for? Dr. Lightman, yeah. It is the source of life, an explanation about the whole, the entire reality that includes everything. And there's nothing further to, there's no point in looking any further that if this is what I'll study, then here I can find everything. Host. So, when did you meet these tens field? Dr. Leighton, somewhere around 1970, 75, maybe 77. This is when I heard about the wisdom of Kabbalah, that probably it's that probably you can find these things there. And that's how I found different circles that were interested in it. Back then, it wasn't like it is today. There weren't any books. I searched all the different libraries, bookshops. I bought what they had, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't really what I was looking for until I met my teacher, the great Baruch Shalom Alevi Ashlag. He was an old religious man. I found him in the religious city of Nebak. And I stayed with him to study. Post. Now, when you opened up the concept of the Ten Sefirot, you studied many things. Science, uh, you studied many fields in science about how different systems work. What was it about the Ten Sefirot that you felt that's different from all other sciences that I studied? Dr. Leitman, the system of connection of man with everything around him and with the upper force, which is one, unique and unified for all of nature. Host, so Ten Sefirot, that's that's the system, Dr. Leighton, yes, the system of connections. Host, 
I'm trying to slip into the shoes of a person who just heard about this for the very first time. There's some upper force that designs all of this. There's me. What does it mean that there's a system of connection between me and that force? Dr. Leifman, it is a system of connections called the Tens Philot. Hosts. So there are forces in nature that are described through the tense field. Dr. Light, yeah, you can put it that way, suppose. Hosts. So, great. I started taking interest. How does it benefit me now that I inquire this thing? What does it do for me? Dr. Leitman, but this, how you open your connection to anything in life, to everything in life. You, you learn about a certain system of connections between you and, suppose, music, you and some science, you and everything, whatever it is. All in all, you're discovering the connection between the systems. And that's how it is with the Ten Sefirot too. Only that in the Ten Sefirot, what we discover is a more universal connection because they include inside themselves the entire connection that exists between people, desires, internality, observation, a person's development historically and in general. In short, you're discovering the nature that exists in our sensations. And you learn how our sensations grasp nature, process it, and how we are supposed to properly perceive this form, shape, qualities, picture, host. On the one hand, the explanation is clear. On the other hand, where is it? So there's nature. I go out to nature. Do I see the sefirot someplace? Dr. Lightman, no, you don't see everything in nature. There are such things that are hidden from you, such things that even though that you feel them, but it's hard for you to come to know them, understand them. Post. So just to see that I get it, there's a certain force that controls nature. Dr. Lightman, it in and of itself is also called nature. Host, okay, that force is called nature. And when I wish to get to know, research this force, come closer to it, there's like a buffer between us called tense field. Dr. Lightman, yes. Host, and if I start taking interest in this field, getting to know the system of connections, this is how I open the way, the connection to them. Yes. So, can these tense field benefit me in my day-to-day life, or I go to work, I have a family, because it's also a part of nature, can it help me in that too? Dr. Lightman, I don't exactly understand what you mean by help. Host, can they benefit me in my day-to-day life? Mm, Don't think so. Host, so what does a person who starts studying the Ten Sefirot, what does he get from it in life? Dr. Lightman, I'd say that he starts understanding the entire system that exists around him, including himself. And how can he understand it, feel it, and even arrange it according to certain inclination of his inclinations of his host. what do you mean I, I I start controlling nature Dr. Lightman you become in control of nature because what you grasp the way you grasp nature now you also grasp it out of your control over it but egoistic control very limited kind of control and when you study the tense field then you already study that's how to tie yourself to the spirit and to nature in a way that it is correct, that you will not distort nature and that nature that you won't corrupt nature and nature won't corrupt you. Host, there's like a you, you need to change yourself from egoistic control to what, Dr. Leighton? Altruistic? We have only two 
forms of relation from man toward nature. Host, and you said that the egoistic method is very limited, Dr. Leitman. Yes, because then you want to reveal and grasp and perceive nature in the force that you were born with. And then you don't really have the ability to do anything because you act within forces and laws that you already consist of. Host, and then the more I make the transition toward the different form of the altruistic force, Dr. Leitman, there you exactly choose how to be, how to behave, how to feel and inquire nature. And it's different already then. Host, why is it not limited like with the ego? Why is it open, Dr. Leitman? Because it depends on your new attitude toward nature, toward people, host, and what becomes revealed, Dr. Leitman? A special connection where you rise above your ego and you're no longer interested in your connection, in your ego, in a form of connection through your ego with nature or toward nature, but you can be completely free of it. That you rise above your feelings, emotions, sensations, desires, and then you start seeing nature, the way it relates to all created beings and to you in a free way of its own, objectively. And that is truly a great benefit that I see, that I discover all the laws of nature the way they are and not the way I, through my eyes, want to see them. You especially see it on little children, little people, how they see everything through their own trajectory. And here, by rising above your egoistic trajectory, you start discovering in an independent way, you yourself, how nature works, what does it want, what does it demand, how do these laws that act in the whole of reality are related or unrelated to you? How can you integrate in them? That's how it works. So to sum up, there's nature and there are like two parallel systems. In the one, I'm governed by my ego with its laws and I'm like a slave there. And there's another system that that abides by spiritual laws where I'm free to get to know the pure forces of nature. And this is the system that the Tensefirot speaks of, and gradually I shift to that system. Dr. Leighton, that's also correct. Now I have a question. Every time that I study with you, it's intriguing on the one hand, and there's always something that I take and grasp, and in every lesson, on every lesson, suddenly open up plenty of more questions. I, when I come out, there's less clear than the things that are clear. Dr. Light, that's great. Host, that's great. I never met this in any other wisdom that you like, you, you, you grasp so much. And on the other hand, you see how much you don't understand. Dr. Lightman, it means that you're really touching a system that's tremendous, maybe infinite, and that you're touching it correctly. Host, so it's correct to come out with even more questions? Dr. Lightman, the purpose of understanding of knowledge is for us not to know. Host, okay. Now, the feeling I had the first time I felt it, I never felt something of the kind ever before. On the one hand, I don't understand nothing. On the other hand, I feel that I that I have to have it. Why am I so attracted to the tense field? 
Dr. Lightman, because you feel from the root of your soul that here it's talking about your root, about you yourself, about your internality, and you still can't explain it, but you feel that here there is something that catches you from the inside. Host, that it's like hidden in me and I don't know about it. Dr. Leitman, yes, that you yourself still can't reveal it. But on the other hand, in some kind of sixth sense, you feel that it's about you, about your internality, about the most precious thing. That, that's exactly how it is. But what is the sixth sense, Dr. Leitman? Sixth sense is that we have five corporeal senses, vision, hearing, smell, taste, touch. And the sixth sense is the additional sense, as Kabbalists sometimes refer to it. It's a sense that is in the force of bestowal, not in the force of reception like the other five senses work, but it works in the force of bestowal, that if we reach the quality of bestowal, then we start to decipher, to develop, to feel, to reveal the whole of reality that we're in, in the sense of bestowal and not in the sense of reception. And then what follows is that I feel a different world. Host. So a person that now hears about it, suppose... He has no background, no scientific background, no spiritual background. But like Danny said, something attracts him, intrigues him internally in the direction of the wisdom of Kabbalah. Dr. Leitman, it's not in the direction of the wisdom of Kabbalah, but it's in the direction of getting to know himself. Who am I? What am I? What for? Where do I exist? What is this world really? Meaning something that on the one hand is far from him, on the other hand, it's the closest thing to him. Host, what's your recommendation for someone who's in this inner conflict, how to take a step in the right direction? Dr. Leithman, that a person should think about it, that he has an opportunity to open, reveal something very important that has to do with the essence of life, the center of life. And that if he will feel it, understand it, reveal it a bit more, it will help him altogether to understand what is man in this world. What does he have as a result? How does he, how can he change his life, understand his life better? And then gradually, he can more correctly orient himself. Host, because we'll do a series of these shows on the Ten Sfirot, uh, we have a quote by Bala Sulam where he explains about the approach to the study. He says, there is a wonderful, invaluable remedy to those who engage in the wisdom of Kabbalah. Although they do not understand what they're learning through the yearning and the great desire to understand what they are learning, they awaken upon themselves the lights that surround their soul. What does it mean exactly? That we are in a certain space that we're not familiar with. There are waves here, different phenomena around us. We don't know what it's about, but we can awaken this space that we exist in, shake it up in order for it to influence us. How do we do it? By taking interest by wanting to bring ourselves closer to that spiritual realm 
And then from that, from there, we start, it starts influencing us. Different forces start influencing us. We're not familiar with each and every force and all of those forces, but after some time, and this could happen pretty quickly, we suddenly feel that something's working on us. It's especially felt very quickly in terms of mood that either it awakens a person, elevates him, or to the contrary, gives him, you know, a grim feeling, and he doesn't know what to do. A dark feeling. And these two sensations start working on a person, on and off. At times like this, at times like that. And by that, a person develops. Host, I heard you saying that if I yearn, I awaken the force that surrounds me. Dr. Leighton, of course, you awaken it now too. Only not enough. Host, sounds kind of like science fiction. There are forces in nature around me, and by wanting to, I create turmoils or whatever. Dr. Leighton, we are under the influence of different forces. And we need to learn how to get along with them. This is actually what the wisdom of Kabbalah teaches a person. How to act such that these forces that all include nature how they will influence us in a more, let's call it, effective, beneficial way in order to bring us to a development, to the broadest possible development. So it makes me more efficient in relation to the forces that govern me. Dr. Lightman, it's not that you are simply under the forces that govern or shake you up, but you control them. You govern these forces. You really control them. Host, first of all, thank you very much. Both Dani and I will love to have more such meetings in order to elaborate on what we talked about today in order to help more and more people to understand and feel the tremendous wisdom of the Ten Sefirot. So, thank you very much, Dr. Leitman. Thank you, Shai. Till next time, we wish you all the best.